Hey everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic, back with another Mattel Jurassic World toy unboxing. We have a lot of cool figures to unbox and review today and do lots of comparisons with, all that good stuff if you're used to watching reviews on my channel. Of course, the main star today is the Habitat Defender Triceratops. This is Mattel's biggest Triceratops figure yet. It's awesome. It's got tons of detail and some other cool features that I cannot wait to check out. We also have the latest wave of Danger Pack releases. We have Dacosaurus. We have Borea Pelta. And we have Pyroraptor with that uh, parrot kind of feathering. Really, really cool, colorful stuff. Can't wait to get them out and uh, compare them to the other figures too. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the newest stuff from Mattel uh, that's we're dropping as part of their Dino Trackers line. And I cannot wait to rip into it. And just a reminder, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my Collect Jurassic YouTube channel here. I love doing reviews and stuff and I love uh, interacting with my fans and all that. So please, please uh, give me a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and dive right into these danger packs here on the left, starting with Dacosaurus, this aquatic reptile. Quite a unique species that I had never heard of. Um, but let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Um, as far as the packaging goes, it's pretty standard Jurassic World Dino Trackers packaging. It's got the biome. Every single one is a biome we got the sort of like uh beach water area we have desert cactus over there we have jungle for the power after running it all off we have desert for the triceratops so they all have their own little biome so the the backgrounds are always different but yeah i mean open open window packaging uh shows what's what else is in the wave on the back here including uh, a repeat of uh last wave and then some stuff about the fax app which i will try to remember to get the scan tags out for each of these so we'll just go ahead and clip this guy out he should pop right out and there he is dicosaurus we'll go ahead and pop his little flippers out so we can get a better look at him but yeah, that's the Dacosaurus out of the box. Um, you saw he had some pretty basic articulation there with um, the fins. They go, they basically are just on a rotating hinge. So um, they go forward and backwards and that's about it. Um, so you can't really make them splay out from the body or anything like that. Um, they almost remind me of sail, uh, seal hands in a way, less like, you know, uh, like a full on fin that a lot of the aquatic reptile toys we have and more of like a fingered fin, like a seal. Kind of interesting. Has a big tail fluke too. I mean, mold wise, it's really, really nice. Pretty simple. It does have articulation on the head that lets it move its head up and down. As far as what the face itself looks like, he's got a pretty, pretty uh, mean looking mug. Lots of large teeth there. His mouth does open. Looks like he's got a painted tongue inside and lots of painted teeth. You can see the one I have. This eye looks pretty good. But on the other side, the eye is kind of uh, not printed on the register mark, which I hate when Mattel messes up the QC like that. I wish they checked for that stuff in the factory because there's nothing worse than finding. This figure was not easy to find. In fact, my friend Greg had to help me find it. I still have yet to find it in store. And when you finally get a figure and the paint is messed up, Always a bummer, but elsewhere the paint looks really nice. It's got this cool striation uh, pattern on the back of it that looks almost like a tiger shark or something. So, um, but yeah, he's cool. He's got again, he's got like the posable neck. If you get him on a little clear stand, he would look, you know, like he's swimming. Um, a nice little simple figure, and one of our smaller aquatic reptiles we've gotten. We haven't gotten a ton of those. Um, I mean, we had the plesiosaurus, which came in a variety of molds here. This is a uh, one of the savage strike plesiosaurs so he's kind of most comparable in size to that plesiosaur there and then like just to get a human in the mix we'll get alan here you can see alan grant next to it um you know it's a pretty small uh reptile again um and sort of one of its bigger brothers i think this is what which one was this this wasn't the chronosaur what um this one was the like Lip Lipluridon, i think so you can see just how have this Liplorodon, which is, you know, the next size up and toy assortment just really dwarfs this guy. Much bigger head and all that. So this guy obviously is going to be cheaper, less features, um, but still, you know, fits right in with all of his aquatic cousins. And Mattel has given us quite a few aquatic creatures already. So Dacosaurus is just the latest in the bunch. Um, Elasmosaurus definitely is my favorite, but I didn't have him pulled for comparisons here, but Dacosaurus is a nice new a nice new range, uh, or rather addition to the smaller range 
of aquatic reptiles. So we don't have too many of those. Jumping into the Borea Pelta. Borea Pelta. Again, I noted this packaging had the desert. Uh, uh, I th yeah, desert on here. So um, on the back, it's got the other figures, same as before. So nothing too different there. So we can just pop right into the figure itself and get it out. Pop Borea Pelta out. This figure is large i mean for us for the the price point that these figures come in i mean it's 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 a chunky toy it's lots of plastic and it's a beautiful looking figure too um you know sort of mold wise so i'm mean, gonna see if i can get it standing evenly on all four legs there perfect that's the borea pelta just again like a really pr pretty dinosaur i know i don't say that very often on this channel but it's just a pretty looking dinosaur it's very elegant and like the streamlined looking really cool paint application too um you can see just how it's just i mean yes it's the same size as dacosaurus but it's much heavier and there's just more plastic to it what's clever about the way they've done the plastic is they have the bottom uh that's sort of this lighter color and they've actually a whole different cast plastic on top for the um the back spikes and all that stuff so allows to do all that without paint just cast plastic a little bit of paint here blending the tail in and uh and then the head of course has that little bit of under paint on the bottom of the neck and then the eyes and the actual mouth has got some paint on it too so it's pretty pretty clean looking dinosaur um from a paint and plastic standpoint um it's got the little tiny yellow and black eyes too but articulation wise this thing's pretty basic you saw me adjusting the legs they go back and forth pretty standard stuff nothing too fancy there but the neck articulation is really nice because not only does it go up and down but it's also on a rotating joint so you can get some really cool poses with just it looking up and down and back and forth and stuff which i think is Let's you do some really cool poses. These spikes are individual plastic too, so they're not poseable, but you don't have to worry about them rubbing on your other toys and, and getting um, getting paint damage. But speaking of uh, other toys, let's go ahead and compare this to some of the other sort of Ankylosaur-esque dinosaurs we have. We have, of course, uh, sort of uh, going with the Pelta theme. You know that we have the uh, Borea Pelta here, the new one. Here is a uh, Sora Pelta. Um, you can see these are supposed to be the same price range and Boreo Pelta is significantly larger, significantly wider, longer, taller. It's just a much larger figure, um, for, again, for this price range. Um, I love this version of Sora Pelta. And I'm holding it in my hand again. I forgot how cool it is with the orange beak and all that and the bright green. Kind of a fun figure. Um, a lot more paint going on uh, for a... Uh, for this version of Sora Pelta. Also just in the same family, I'm not gonna get a full on Ankylosaur dinosaur figure or something out, but we have, um, this is a um, Minmi, I think. So Minmi is another um, kind of similarly lacking a club tail. These None of these guys have club tails, right? Um, lacking that, but um, having all those studs, but uh, Minmi is even smaller than Sora Pelta. Again, meant to be slightly cheaper assortment of figure, but Borea Pelta is definitely the biggest of uh, of these three. So the latest and the biggest figure of them all. We'll go ahead and get Grant back in here for for a little bit of a, a feature too. So yeah, I mean, he, this thing still scales nicely with humans and doesn't look like too massive and hard to deal with for our Jurassic Park visitors. Um, so yeah, Borea Pelta looking really nice with that posed neck. Um, and simple plastic casting for coloration, which leaves us with the Pyroraptor, the only repaint of the bunch. Dacosaurus and Borea Pelter are all new figures. Mattel's never done those before. Pyroraptor, on the other hand, we got lots of Pyroraptor figures for Jurassic World Dominion since that dinosaur was featured so prominently um, in the movie. Um, and here we have the, uh, the Pyroraptor again, but just this time with some wild colors. Um, obviously inspired by some real world animals. Um, this one I think is supposed to be a macaw. If you've ever seen a macaw, the coloration is going to be very similar to what Mattel set up here. And this one looks really, really cool. Um, I really like the, uh, 
like the bright orange on the legs. Looks really cool. It almost looks like Chaos Effect. Um, just, I know it's, it's supposed to be based on a bird, but it just reminds me of Chaos Effect with sort of the crazy blues and yellows. Um, it looks really, really nice. But articulation-wise, it's got the legs that go back and forth. It's got the arms that go just back and forth, no outward. And then the neck that goes up, down, side to side. Um, rotates backwards uh, like that. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, you know, squawk back for, for backup, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, he, he's just... Uh, you know, he, look, he looks just like the Pyroraptor from Dominion with just some macaw coloring, but really nice detail there uh, with that white effect on the eyes. So speaking of the Pyroraptor from Dominion, we can go ahead and get him up here. This is literally one for one, the same exact figure, uh, just with different colorations. We have the red and black for uh, Dominion, but this macaw one obviously is even got different different style eyes terms of coloration so i would have loved to see this one with a little bit more uh, claw paint and maybe some blending where the uh where the legs meet the body like see how they kind of blended this in the body and added some stripes It'd be cool if they'd had some of that blue coming down the hips too uh just to give it a little more of a gradation into the different um colors since they are so wildly different on this figure but um i mean overall i think it's still really well executed um, for the colors, even if the blending is a little bit harsh. Um, seeing this one in hand versus the promo pictures, I like it much better. Before I move on, I will pop out all the scan codes for these guys. This is Pyroraptor right here that I just checked out. Just pops into the hip there. Boreapelta has his in the middle of his back there. Just pops out the middle of the back. Last but not least, we have Dacosaurus. Same deal, it just pops in the back right there. So Dacosaurus, Boreapelta, and Pyroraptor, all of their scan codes for the Jurassic World Facts app on display for you guys. Let's hope I can remember to do it with the big fella over here. That is the Habitat Defender Triceratops. Kind of a mouthful, kind of a strange name, but uh, the, the the kind of reason behind that is it's, it's making an impact, you know, supporting the bioeconomy. It's because this figure is made, uh, a certain amount of it is made with, let's see, what's it say here on the back? 60% ISCC certified plastic. Uh, so 60% of it's made of that plastic. Uh, packaging's printed using vegetable ink oil. Packaging's made from recycled paperboard. So basically this toy is, um, you know, more or less more sustainable than a lot of the other <laughs> Jurassic World toys Mattel makes um, for those reasons alone, which is cool if you're into that stuff. Um, you know, I guess at least they're making an effort, right? But um, personally, I'm more interested in just getting a gig gigantic Triceratops figure. That's, that's the main draw for me. And I think a lot of people have been waiting and waiting for a big Triceratops figure because if you think about it, the Triceratops figures that we've gotten so far technically aren't true scale in terms of how massive the animal should be. Now, do they accurately show what we saw on screen in Jurassic films? More or less, sure. The Triceratops we see, especially in the first one, is pretty small. Um, but this guy's meant to be a full-on grown adult. Um, so it's going to be massive once we get it next to some human figures. We'll, we'll see just how big it is. And we'll also compare it to some other Triceratops figures, some other carnivore figures. I'll even get the Hammond Collection Brachiosaurus in here that is brand new and do some comparisons with that huge figure too. So without further ado, let's pop this one open. I think you've kind of got an idea of the box. It talks a lot about that sustainability, um, shows the figure on the back, and then it also has that little desert motif since this is technically meant to be a desert dino. But let's go ahead and open up the box and see how hard this is going to be to remove how many plastic ties there might be hopefully it's pretty straightforward but these toys get harder to unbox every year more security features and all that stuff so i have let's see how this thing popped in i guess it's going to get it's going to get uh kind of ugly here as i pop it's got those things on the feet like the uh, bigger predator figures have that pop out from below here. Let's see if I can get this other one out. So I have four. I 
gosh, it's got four. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get real ugly here and just pop these out like this. The best way to do it is when you can reach them all. And there's no saving this box now. This box is done. There is the Triceratops. The tail is actually in here, right here in the corner. And I should be able to just pop that out. I think it's just held in by cardboard. So there's the tail of Triceratops. So let's go ahead and pop that in if there's a right way, or it looks like there's a, looks like there is a wrong and right way to do it. I think I just did it the right way. So, whew, there it is. Wow, this thing is big. Um, that's my hand for comparison. So, very large figure. Right out of the box, my first impressions are it reminds me a lot of the Mosasaurus figure that we got for um, Jurassic World Dominion or Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Then we got a couple more after that. This feels very similar to that in terms of sort of it's kind of hollow. It's lighter plastic, right? Um, but man, this thing is packed with detail. Let's go ahead and jump right into that detail. First thing I notice is these giant pebbly um, painted pieces. They have them on the legs, on the back, on the uh, other leg. They're not painted on the front leg, but they're there. The sculpt so some pretty nice sculpted details there. Um, I think I had the tail backwards actually. Um, so really nice sculpted details. And then also we have I'm just looking at this. Wow, this this tail is even poseable. That's crazy. Um, this tail rotates right, and also the tip rotates around. Is what I was looking at, which is just an extra layer of articulation that's really not even necessary. But they added this tip of the tail that rotates too, which is pretty funny. I was trying to see which is the like correct way to to have it pose, but I think it's probably something like that. I don't know, but um, yeah, I mean, back to the paint. It's got the pebbly paint all over it. It's got, um, actually, this is sculpted plastic down here in the bottom. This isn't painted. This is a separate plastic piece. It's a different color cast that they've blended in under the head. And then the nails look painted, right? They look like they're painted, but again, it's a separate piece of plastic down there. So um, they've really used that casted plastic really smartly to give this thing a couple different tones of color on the nails on the body. Then the head is where the detail in this thing really shines. You've got uh, paint on every single um, like horn uh, ridge up here. You obviously have paint on the horns themselves. They're very rigid. You got paint on the nose and the beak. And I know you're like, well, of course, Tim, why wouldn't there be paint on that? I mean, you wouldn't believe how many Mattel Jurassic figures, especially the last year or two where they've quit painting these or they didn't paint this horn or they quit painting the beak a lot of cost cutting um across the board which i lament often here on my channel i really wish we could get back to fallen kingdom where we had more paint detail but figures like this give me hope because there's plenty of paint detail here um you know with that extra paint on the bot on the back and then this sort of casted effect that adds a little bit more of a two-tone effect but getting back to the paint on the face we have these really nice clean eye paint with the iris interesting eye color for sure um but it really pops and then i want to know if the tongue is painted as you can see yep it is so you can open the mouth here on this one which is another uh, requested feature for the Triceratops figures and it even has a little painted tongue in there too so um, everything you need there then articulation wise pretty basic leg articulation um, that goes back and forth pretty fun um, there, that's kind of where it ends there's no knee articulation so the pose you have is the pose you get but you can at least do some running poses or maybe you can do some kind of getting down on the ground poses but for the most part you're going to be stuck uh with this sort of like walking pose and then the neck has really nice articulation it's on a ball joint which is my favorite kind of articulation because you can do you can do all kinds of stuff and you can look down you can look up so a lot of dynamic poses you can do with just that ball joint and then i already noted that the the um, beak is also Posable too. So really, really cool. Can you do the stick triceratops pose? That's a little harder. Um, you can kind of do it, um, but obviously his two legs are going to stick out way, way, way out. Um, 
not really lay flat like you would want them to with a sick triceratops, right? But let's go ahead and do some comparisons because I know I'm sure a lot of you are anxious to know how much bigger this thing is than what we were used to. So first things first, we'll get Alan here. You can see he is absolutely dwarfed by the triceratops. I mean, he is like, you know, he is barely coming up to this thing's nose here. So um, definitely definitely a large dino there so really really big um and then getting closer to home we have a standard mattel triceratops here this is the first fallen kingdom one so you can see again just how much more gargantuan this triceratops is compared to the mainline uh mattel triceratops we also have the hammond collection triceratops one of m definitely one of my favorite triceratops figures this thing is a beauty it's got gorgeous paint detail on it uh, true to the movie and you can see the similarities in sculpt between this hammond collection trike and the new habitat defender one i mean they basically are using the exact same sculpt just upgraded or rather supersized um but it's the same sculpt more or less uh but this one obviously has a little bit more of a movie accurate dirty paint job compared to this sort of desert inspired habitat defender triceratops so you can see get a, a feel here of just how much bigger um the new triceratops is compared to the other figures pretty impressive stuff right um but the impressive comparisons don't stop there um i'll go ahead and the sake of bringing some more humans in take a look at this next to a standard uh jeep wrangler from jurassic park i mean this thing could literally flip this vehicle no problem um so if you were out there in the field uh you know uh, tending to the dinosaurs you would not want to roll up on this extra large version of the triceratops because he would he would flip you <laughs> so a uh, pretty big big guy there um next to the vehicle the vehicle isn't it's it's taller than the vehicle almost by half um so pretty impressive stuff putting it next to um a couple of the more recent dino trackers figures we have the dino trackers uh hunt and chomp tyrannosaurus rex and the camouflage and attack uh Dominus Rex here. Let's see if we can get these all here. So he actually can hold his own against these large predators, the Hunt and Chomp T-Rex and uh, the Camouflage Indominus. I mean, they're it's basically just a third super super sized dinosaur compared to them. Um, it, it's it's almost as tall as the T-Rex uh, with its we consider its frill. It is just yeah. I mean, this thing. This is this is this would be a very fair fight if not uh, slanted towards the Triceratops were it to fight the t-rex or even the indominus you know the indominus would have a hard time defending itself from such a massive herbivore with such massive horns and finally i wanted to bring in the hammond collection t-rex a gorgeous figure finally got the new version if you didn't know there's a new version where the eyes are a little bit clearer and the skin the um paint is a little bit more vivid um, they kind of made some running changes to this figure and I just picked this one up. It's really nice. Um, and you can see this, mine's even kind of bent down, I guess a little bit, but, um, let me see if I can get him up a little higher. So he's a little bit more fair fight, but I mean, yeah, it, same thing with the other, the other, um, figures I just had on the table. I mean, they're just much, let's see if I can get this guy, not bent down, but sort of bent up, um, no, his, he doesn't want to stay with his hinge up. There we go. He can stay. Um, you can see this Triceratops is just, again, absolutely, absolutely massive compared to this thing. Um, even with this guy's bigger size than that Dino Tracker's um, T Rex. I mean, he looks bigger here, but the Triceratops is still going to give him a run for his money for sure. So, um, again, a pretty fair fight between these two in terms of size and stuff but I'm gonna say goodbye to rexy again even though it is such a gorgeous figure um so yeah i mean triceratops like you know what i guess i did have did want to do one more uh comparison let me just grab something real quick this hammond collection brachiosaurus here i gotta stand up for this because this thing is too large for my table 
you watch that review, you know just how big this thing is. Yeah, I mean, probably the only figure capable of making this Triceratops look small, and it's not even that small, is the Hammond Collection Brachiosaurus. But, um, you know, that's considering when you put the regular Triceratops next to it, that thing looks pretty small. You put this guy next to it, it's uh, an appreciable size difference. And he's just a little bit more on the same level as this Brachiosaurus. But hey, they're both fantastically detailed figures in terms of paint application. So a little more of a fairer uh, relation there. Um, but yeah, the Habitat Defender Trike is just a totally awesome new version, new way to enjoy Mattel's Triceratops in a larger size. It's a solid figure. It's light, but it's got solid articulation, great paint that seems like it's going to be pretty durable too um, in terms of how thickly they've applied it. Beautiful sculpt, again, based on that Hammond Collection Triceratops, um, just kind of made into a more mass market core figure. And yeah, it's going to scale correctly next to humans in terms of that full adult size. So basically everything everyone wanted from Mattel for a new Triceratops figure, we're finally getting it with that Habitat Defender Triceratops. And of course, we also looked at the Danger Packs today, Pyroraptor, Boreo, Pelta, and Dacosaurus, all great stuff too. So, um, you know, Mattel continues to pump out toys every year, giving us some new species like Boreo, Pelta, and Dacosaurus. Um, and also revisiting species like Triceratops and giving us something that's basically all new to in the form of the Habitat Defender trike. So really, really cool stuff. Before I move on, I do need to show off that, that scan code. Almost forgot for the Triceratops. It's hidden there in the tail back here and pops back in, but did not want to forget to do that. But that, I think I hit all the scan codes. So finally did it for this video for all these figures, but all great toys that I'm um, thrilled to add to the collection. And I hope you enjoyed my little review of them. But again, I'm Tim the Collect Jurassic. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe.